Imagine life without electricity, no light, no phones, no internet. Our lives are dependent on them. How the economy flows, how people travel, and how we survive are all dependent on electricity. By the year 2100, the global consumption of energy will increase by 125 percent. Thus, we have continuously searched for our reliable energy sources. We started with coal during the industrial period, then moved to oil, to renewable but expensive sources like water, wind, and solar. But the most promising of all is nuclear. Ever since its inception in the early 20th century, we have used it as a weapon or energy source without fully understanding the capacity and the power it may bring. During the oil crisis in the mid 70s, then Philippine President Ferdinand Marcos sought another energy source, and he saw the potential of the nuclear power. The Philippines planned to construct two nuclear power plants, but only one, the Bataan Nuclear Power Plant. Was finished. However, it never went critical. So, why did Bataan Nuclear Power Plant didn't open, even it promised to generate 621 megawatts of electricity, enough to power almost half of the entire Luzon grid? Atoms are constructed like miniature solar systems. At the center of the atom is the nucleus. Orbiting around it are electrons. The nucleus is composed of protons and neutrons, very densely packed together. Hydrogen, the lightest element, has one proton. The heaviest natural element, uranium, has 92 protons. The nucleus of an atom is held together with great force, the strongest force in nature. When bombarded with a neutron, it can be split apart, a process called fission. Because uranium atoms are so large, the atomic force that binds it together is relatively weak, making uranium good for fission. In nuclear power plants, neutrons collide with uranium atoms, splitting them. The split releases neutrons from the uranium that in turn collide with other atoms, causing a chain reaction. This chain reaction is controlled with control rods that absorb neutrons. In the core of nuclear reactors, the fission of uranium atoms releases energy that heats water to about 520 degrees Fahrenheit. This hot water is then used to spin turbines that are connected to generators, producing electricity. Nuclear energy was first introduced to the Philippines as part of then U.S. President Dwight Eisenhower's Atom for Peace program. In 1958, the Philippine government established a nuclear program under the Philippine Atomic Energy Commission. In 1973, the Organization of Arab Petroleum Exporting Countries, or OPEC, proclaimed an oil embargo, meaning crude oil from these countries can't be exported. The embargo was targeted at nations perceived as supporting Israel during the Yom Kippur War. It was initially targeted to countries like Japan, the United States, Canada, the Netherlands, and the United Kingdom. But it greatly affected the entire world. As a result, Marcos decided to build a nuclear facility in the Philippines to address the growing need for energy. There were two proposals submitted by reputable energy companies. General Electric and Westinghouse Electric. GE submitted a proposal worth $700 million. It contained detailed specifications of the nuclear plants. Westinghouse offered a significantly lower price tag of $500 million. However, 
they didn't disclose the details of the project. In 1974, a presidential committee was tasked to oversee the project preferred GE's proposal. However, it was overruled by Marcos around June, who then signed a letter of intent awarding the project to Westinghouse, despite the absence of any specifications of their proposals. Moreover, in 1975, the Westinghouse project cost skyrocketed to a whopping 1.2 billion US dollars without giving any concrete explanation. The National Power Corporation didn't have a choice but to build only one reactor instead of two. Later, it was revealed that Westinghouse sold similar technology to other countries for only a fraction of the project cost it built in the Philippines. Construction on the Bataan nuclear power plant began in 1976, but it was briefly halted after the Three Mile Island incident in the United States. Subsequent safety reports revealed that there were over 4,000 defects in the Bataan nuclear power plant. Among the issues that were raised as it was built near a major geological fault line close to the then dormant Mount Pinatubo. Around midnight of April 26, 1986, a large blaze from number 4 reactor of Chernobyl broke out and an uncontrolled nuclear chain reaction occurred. A large amount of energy was suddenly released, vaporizing superheated cooling water and rupturing the reactor core in a highly destructive steam explosion. It not only affected the city of Pripyat, but the entire world as well, with radioactive materials being carried away by winds as far as Sweden and United States. The worst nuclear disaster in history was caused by reactor design flaws and serious breach of protocol during simulated power outage safety test. It is also the same year when the Marcos regime was overthrown by People Power Revolution, ending his 21-year regime and catapulted Corazon Aquino to the presidency. Moreover, everything that was associated with Marcos was rejected including the Bataan nuclear power plant. Optimism quickly turned into skepticism. 1986 saw the first nuclear power plant in the Philippines and in Southeast Asia mothballed because of politics and safety issues of nuclear power. But then, clamor for the reopening of Bataan nuclear power plant was revived during the power crisis in the 90s and the skyrocketing of oil prices in 2007. During those times, the Department of Energy was close to reconsidering nuclear energy as a potential energy source for the country. With nuclear power, it can potentially lower the cost of electricity, which is beneficial for our economy. However, in 2011, a magnitude 9 earthquake jolted central and northeast Japan, causing tsunamis and eventually a nuclear meltdown of the Fukushima nuclear power plant. It created global panic and concerns about the safety and the integrity of the nuclear plants. Meanwhile, in the Philippines, the incident virtually led to an undeclared moratorium on all plans to go nuclear for power generation. If these weren't enough, adding to these various setbacks, the emergence of natural gas, wind, and solar energy pushed nuclear power deeper into dormancy. As the demand for energy grow, plans about reviving the nuclear power plant have been considered. Talks about reopening it are currently being debated in the Senate, and there are voices on both sides of the issue. Proponents for reinstating the plant say that the energy source is cheap and that after the initial investment to upgrade the plant, and it can help with the issue of the supply of electricity. However, opponents staunchly disagree, saying that the revival of the plant is too expensive even to consider and that the money would be better spent on other electricity generation projects. The International Atomic Energy Agency, led by Akira Omoto, made two primary recommendations. First, the power plant status must be thoroughly evaluated by technical inspections and economic evaluations conducted by a committed group of nuclear power experts with experience in preservation management. Second, 
It advised the Philippine government on the general requirements for starting its nuclear power program, stressing that the proper infrastructure, safety standards, and knowledge be implemented. Nevertheless, experts are also still considering the plant's citing issues. There is still uncertainty about the eruption history of Mount Natib, a volcano only a few miles away. Because of this problem and the proximity to active faults, seismologists are proposing to set up more sensors to do testing before reconsidering opening the Bataan nuclear power plant to electric generation. However, proponents are of reinstating the plants as soon as possible, point out that the Bataan nuclear power plant was allegedly built to withstand earthquakes and tsunamis. It is clear that the issue of the Bataan nuclear power plant will be talked about in the Philippines for months and years to come as the country tries to deal with supplying electricity to a continually growing population. For now, the mammoth structure sits quietly at the Bataan Peninsula, still waiting to be fueled and go critical.